You need 4,000 watch hours to get monetized, right? So let's have a very close look at what you can do to dependably get there. Usually, it is the case that once you reach 1,000 subscribers, of course, you need that as well, you about at the same time will reach 4,000 watch hours as well. But sometimes, it depends, you might take longer to reach those 4,000 watch hours. And then in that case, we need to fix something. In case you didn't reach 1,000 subscribers yet, well then rather watch this video that is all about gaining those subscribers and most likely your 4,000 watch hours as well. So it could be the case you don't need to fix anything, but if you are in the situation that you need to get to 4,000 watch hours, it is um, more difficult for you than reaching those 1,000 subscribers. Well, let's have a look. When I say we need to fix something, it's nothing bad, by the way. But there are mainly two things that you need to improve in order to get your watch hours on par with those subscribers that you have. That is namely that your audience retention is a little weak and your subscribers might not be active. Well, if you want to know which of those two are your weakest point, then you might go to the Morning Fame Analytics, here the workshop tab, go to watch time, and here you can see how your watch time is compared to an average channel of your size. For me, it's around average. The watch time from visitors, non-subscribers is a little bit weak. I could work on that. Or look at the subscribers tab. Here you have a count for active subscribers, which is strong. So in my case, I would need to work on the watch time. By the way, invite link in the description if you want to check out the Morning Fame analytics. But whether you look at analytics or not, working on both your audience retention and getting your subscribers being active is always worth it. No matter at what size of channel you are, improving that always yields better results for your channel. So before uh, I explain you more precisely what active subscribers are, you might wonder what the term means. Let's focus on audience retention first and what you can do about that. So as you know, the longer people watch your videos, the more watch time, the more watch hours you get. And if you look at a regular video, probably for you will be looking similar like this. We have this audience retention. Many people drop off in the beginning of the video, the steep decline here. And then over the course of the video, fewer and fewer and fewer are still watching. And here in this case, only 14% of all my viewers of this video is watched to the end. Well, this is not a good result. You want to have people watching most of the video further up. To give you a better example, look at this video. Here, this decline at the beginning is much weaker. You always have that, by the way. Don't expect to ever have not a decline in the beginning, but you need to get it as little as possible. So this is a great example here after the first 30 seconds, as you can see, 70% are still watching. Then ideally you have very small decline over the course of the video. And here luckily at the end of the video, 40% roughly are still watching it. So giving you a good example how it should look like is only half of the story. The question is, how do you get there? And for that, there is one little thing you can pay attention to that changes it all. I mean, of course, you saw in many other YouTube tips videos, there's so many things that you can do in order to improve audience retention. But one thing influences the whole audience retention for the whole video. And that is actually what happens in the beginning. The more people you can keep from the beginning, the better it will influence the audience retention for the rest of the video. Just to go back to the bad example, I lost so many people in the beginning already. There is no gain anymore to keep people watching to the end because I already lost all of them. And at the same time, since here in the good example, I kept so many more viewers, there is a reason why I kept them in the beginning because the beginning of the video was exciting enough that people actually decided this video is worth watching to the end. When you make a good impression in the beginning, then it's much more likely that people stay involved 
interested in your video for the whole duration. So pay attention to the beginning. It's easy as that. For example, if you remember the beginning of this video, I immediately talked about the 4000 watch hours and that you need them for monetization and the kind of deep thinking that we go into in order to understand what you need to do, right? So you immediately understand, okay, I arrived at a video that is important to me. Yeah, that is of course for educational videos. For more entertainment based videos, you might have seen on other channels that they front load the best scene of their video. For example, if you have a gaming video, there is a scene, let's say a um, grain silo topples over like, like a very um, astonishing or a funny scene that you have in the video, just copy it and put it in the beginning of your video so that when people start watching your video, they immediately get to see such an exciting scene. And that sets them up to think like, whoa, that must be an interesting video. Let me watch that for longer. But of course, this is always unique to the niche you are currently in. The type of videos influence how you started in the beginning. What you need to do basically is to stir interest from the viewer, but how you do it is specific to your niche. So the best thing that you can do is watching videos on other channels in your niche, similar videos and pay special attention to the first, let's say 20 seconds of their video. What do they do there? How do those first seconds of the video make you feel as a viewer and try to replicate that in your own videos? Just pay attention to how do those videos begin. And this gives you ideas what you can do in order to drive up this attention, that interest of your viewers from the beginning and then the audience retention further down will also be higher with it. All right, and the second thing is having active subscribers. Active subscribers, in case you wanna, are those subscribers who keep coming back to watch your new videos. Yeah, those are the most loyal fans that you have who are excited when you upload a new video and have to watch it then. So the goal here is, once people subscribe, keep them active. So for that, it is very important that you think a lot about what next videos you publish. What do those subscribers that you recently gained want to watch on your channel so that they are inclined, if they see a notification, for example, about your new video, that they say, wow, this seems to be such a great video like the last ones they watched and subscribed for so that they keep coming back to your channel and watch your new videos. And if you wanna understand which videos you need to create, well, you could, for example, use Morning Fame's analytics. Here in the Velocity tab, you have a good subscriber experience report, which tells you the top 10 videos that worked best for your subscribers. And if we look at my channel, here we have a video about the suggested videos algorithm, shorts algorithm, this is suggested videos again, this as well. The algorithm in general, viral videos, that's a little bit of something different, but here we have suggested videos algorithm as well. So I understand when I'm talking about the YouTube algorithms, this always works well with my subscriber. So if you understand which video topics work best for your subscribers, then you can publish with each video or at least every other video, a video about a topic that you know your subscribers will love. And the more you get your subscribers keeping coming back to watch your new videos, of course, the more watch time you will get. Then suddenly the thousand subscribers you also need for the monetization will be enough to get this 4,000 watch hours as well. Because if enough of them are active and watch your new videos, then getting those watch hours is not complicated. Another thing that you can do in order to increase your watch hours is of course doing live streams. And there you actually catch two birds with one stone. Active subscribers keep being active thanks to live streams for a good reason. So you not only get a lot of watch time out of those live streams, you also ensure that more of your subscribers keep being active because in live stream you have the opportunity to have this personal interaction. Your viewers feel closer to you. And then of course, after those live streams are more inclined to watch your new videos again as well. So live streams are really valuable to do. And understand this, 
Live streams are oftentimes really just for your active subscribers. It's not so much about getting new viewers to your channel. As you learn, there are other strategies to get new viewers to your channel, like YouTube SEO, for example. Live streams are there to keep your existing audience, your active subscribers, excited about your channel. And if you want to do a successful live stream, then always think about what can you do in order to provide value inside the live stream that you otherwise wouldn't be able to give in regular videos. In my case, for example, I always do channel reviews in live streams. I couldn't do a channel review in a regular video because then it's mostly only interesting to the one who I reviewed. But in live streams, I can do many channel reviews one after the other and people are theirs to stay, want to be live in order to have the chance to get a channel review. So if you wonder what you could do in your live streams, of course, again, watch those live streams of other channels in the same niche as you are and see what they do. And always think about what these other channels do. What parts of those is adding value to the audience giving them a reason why they should watch it live. Yeah, that is really the holy grail here. You want to include something that makes it worth watching live, not just the replay. Although the, the replay will give you additional watch hours, what really matters is your live audience. And there are many things that you can do specific to your niche. You can learn best from the big channels in your niche, what they do in their live streams, what they offer as value that motivates people to be live while the stream is running. To get a decent live audience, however, you need subscribers first so that there are enough people to tune in when you go live. Maybe a couple dozen people who join you live. And for that, of course, you need to think about how to get subscribers first. And I have the perfect pair of videos to this one. Here is the one that explains you how to get your first 1000 subscribers. Cheers, my friends.